Today I'm going to teach you the Ohm's Law Lab. When we talk about Ohm's Law, we actually talk about the study of three people. So now, now we're going to put together the, the study of three people in electric circuit. Just like you see over here, this is an electric circuit. I have the battery was invented by Alessandro Volta. I have the current current flow in the wire from positive terminal to the negative terminal was discovered by Ampere 1820. And finally, I have the resistance inside the resistor sitting in the bulb was discovered by Ohm. Now let's draw these fast over here. This is a closed circuit. Now we have to put the battery. Few things we're gonna put. Battery is positive, this is negative. So the current flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal. So this is how current flow clockwise direction from positive terminal to negative terminal. Draw the light bulb in a traditional way, zigzag line, and we call it a resistor. And battery provides a voltage. And there is a SI unit for the voltage, and that is volt. And this was invented by Volta, 1799. The current, this is the current, this is the symbol for current. The SI unit for current is amps. Current was discovered by Ampere, as I said. And then a resistor, a resistor provide resistance. The SI unit for resistance is ohm, and resistance discovered by, of course, ohm. So a meter read the current because voltmeter measures the voltage. So you're going to turn it to an equation. So equation would be Ohm's law. V, I, and R. This is a triangular relationship. This is a triangle. All right. So voltage right here, current right here, and the resistance right here. If you want to find the voltage, voltage is I times R. If you want to find the current, current is V over R. And if you find the resistance, resistance is V over I. So we turn the story to the circuit and then circuit to the equation. Now we're going to try to understand the relationship. If voltage increases, then the current is increases as well. 2 voltage 1 amps, 1 amps, 4 voltage 2 amps, 6 voltage 3 amps. So the relationship is direct. And we even know the slope of this line. So the slope is delta y over delta x. What is our delta y? Well, voltage. What is our delta x? Well, current. So we see m is equal to delta v over, over i, voltage over current. Now, we're not going to call it m. All right, we're going to call it, we're going to give it a name. And ohm, give it a name, 1827. We call it resistance. So then resistance is V over I. Let's check whether that is correct. Resistance is V over I. Okay. So now we're going to verify whether that is correct by the, by creating the circuit. We have over here the power pack coming from the battery. We have the voltmeter. We have the ammeter. And we have the light bulb. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the battery. And then this one, I'm going to have the voltage. And this one, I'm going to have the current. So I'm going to have the one battery, two battery, three battery, and four battery. What happened if I increase the battery? What happened to the brightness? 
what happened I increased to the voltage with the current all right and then you're gonna also find the resistance but not right now okay so one battery so one battery give us how much voltage about 2.10 so 2.10 and the current is 0.21 and now two battery so now we're gonna put two battery two battery 4.25 4.25 and and um, the current is 0.32 I'm gonna put three battery three battery and we see 6.3 and the current is 0.39 and finally four battery I keep checking the brightness of the the bulb four batteries we have 8.3 and uh, 0.43 so in this case you have a constant resistance and resistance is 2 ohms however this one if you plot it this is the voltage and this is the current so right here first data is right here and the second data is 4.4.25 and 3.2 the data is right here and the third point is 6.3.39 right here and then 8.3 uh, 0.43 right here so you see that unlike this one you don't have just one constant okay why is that is that because when I was collecting data there was some human error involved due to my observation or due to the error involved with the even battery or the meter or the voltmeter or even with the resistor however how can we make it look like that or how we can make a perfection well it's very simple if we do it million times then how this would look like then we're gonna have a million data okay so then we're gonna have a million data so now I'm gonna take the best fit line and that would be the R and if the voltage increases then of course current should be the red increases thank you so much so 1.16 current is 0.15 now I'm gonna increase the voltage from by double if I increase the voltage 2.63 I get 0.25 now I'm going to increase the voltage if I increase the voltage 3.86 what do I get I get about 0.37 finally I'm going to increase the voltage to 5.13 and I'm going to get 0.44 so now we're going to draw this relationship let's see what happened what I get to explain the relationship between voltage and current explain the relationship or explain the uh, the two circuit in terms of current keeping the R same okay. you're gonna keep that Gary can I work with you keep the R same okay what do you think uh, about this one oh uh, me I think it's uh... Because the Forget about Ohm's law. Pretend like you don't even know Ohm's law. What does this tell you? This relationship tells you. Um, does it tell us that V, v is the, proportional to I? It tells you. V goes up, I goes up. I goes up. Oh. All right. It also tells you the slope, right? Yeah. It does tells you the slope, right? It tells the slope is one over I. Uh, so delta I over. Delta V. Delta V is equal to what is it? The slope? One over R. One over R because V over I is R. So um, oh. I, the inverse of that should be the inverse of R. So this is true for what type of materials? Uh, metals, metals maybe? Well ohmic. What is it? Ohmic. Ohmic. I wonder if it's an actual word or 
you just make that up? I sometimes make it up. If this is omic, what does this uh, this relation tells you? Non omic. It's non omic. Hmm. Can you give me? Can you give me something? An example of omic. Uh, copper. An example of uh, omic could be a, a, a circuit that may uh, that made of uh, copper metal, metal. just as copper. Copper or zinc or aluminum or. Uh... <coughs> Non-omic. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the things that 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 made out of uh, semi semiconductor. semiconductor. So this or is conductor. Numbers, right? That's right, and this is semiconductor. Semi oh, no. conductor. Conductor. Which is a diode. I think diodes. Yeah. Like diode so. is a semiconductor. So, what is the example of diode? For example, uh, silicon. Silly. Silicon. Or carbon. Or <laughs> boron. Or, or argon. Right. Or potassium. All right, now. Okay, okay, calm down. Calm down now, now okay. this doesn't. Not ohmic. This doesn't. Okay, this one doesn't. Yeah. Obeda ohms law. Uh, this one do not obey the ohms law. It should be arrested. <laughs> but this one does obey the ohms law. It's about so the conductor made out of metals obey the ohms law. law. So we should not even call it ohms law. We should call a description or an information or a relation. But since we are used to calling it ohms law, we're not going to change. I mean it's the law discovered by a, a person named Ohm. So yeah, that's true. That that's that's true. But when do we call something law? When it's always true. When it's true for everything. For example, Newton's first law, second law, third law. Yeah, laws of motion. But oh. this law oh. seems like oh. fails for. for so it Things that made of semiconductor. Right. What we do is still so call it. We should call it Ohm's theory. Oh, is germanium also non ohmic? I heard it's a non metal. Yes, anything that's non metal is non ohmic. Alright, let's go over here. I wonder if you can make a conductor out of Alright, we're gonna keep calling it Ohm's law. Why do we gonna keep calling it Ohm's law? It's we because. We get it. We are used to it. But it should in reality be called Ohm's theory, right? No, we're gonna call it Ohm's relation. Oh. It's less, less prestigious than theory. Okay, theory is like when it, when it's almost like a law, then we call it theory. Almost like a law. Oh. Okay, then we call it theory. Okay, now let's get to number two. What does this tell you in terms of current? Oh. If this current is I. What about this one? 2i. 2i. So now voltage and current, then you see a relation. Right. What, what, what this relation is? Well, V equal i r. This relation well, is? V voltage is, is? Proportional to i. Proportional to, to, copy. to the i. And current is proportional to the? Voltage. Voltage. All right. But isn't that necessarily true? Because V Oh, girl, that takes us to the R. Oh. Fantastic. So v and I R. Very and good. R and G over I. Very good. Because true, V is a kind of inversely proportional. Very good. That takes us to the R. Another corrected. So far, we've seen two corrected. One wow. is current and one is voltage. Now you are. And they were both made by me, Isaac. Oh, yeah, sure. And we are now. None. None. Uh -huh. doing okay, so now we're gonna get to see another corrector, and that is the R. Stop getting my name wrong. Alright, so it's lesson, guys. Pay attention. Alright, so we're gonna start our lesson with very simple thing, and that is um like two pipe. Short pipe can carry Ew. can carry what? Water. Pipe can carry what? Water. Very dirty water. water. The length and the area of this pipe are the same. Same. Hmm. 
All right. So what are the difference between these three pipes? So they are the pipes. Orientation. 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 That means this is level. This is zero degree with respect to the horizontal ground. This is like 15 degree, I guess. 15 degree and this is 30, 60. 60 degree. Okay, so we get the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This can carry what? Water. This can carry the water. water. But so the flow, flow is affected water. by gravity. Flow of water. But the flow is affected by gravity. Which one? Pipe number one, pipe number two, pipe number three. Which one will have greater flow of water, you think? I think pipe number three. Pipe number three will have greater flow flow of water. water. Is because why? What is the reason? Um, it has a greater orientation. Than Who the is water. the actor? Who is the actor behind the flow of the water? Who is responsible? Do you have to put a machine to carry the water? No. no. Okay, so who is the actor? Gravity. Gravity. So, so which one has more gravitational potential energy? Oh, three. This one has more gravitational potential energy because greater height. And this one is no. zero. Basically none. Basically none. So the flow of water is almost zero. Zero. Flow of water is close to zero. Flow of water is far from zero. Far from zero. Why are we talking about gravitational potential energy? Because, because that affects the flow of water. Okay, we are not interested of flow of water. We are interested of flow of electrons. Electrons. Correct. Maybe there's like some tiny microscopic uh, debris Good. stopping the water from flowing. So just what? like we learned that uh, the electrons have to overcome barriers uh, uh, like atoms Good. trying uh, out energy from voltage, the water has to encounter stone debris and then uh, dissolve it. Good. <laughs> Good. So earlier we saw two rectangle right yeah and two rectangle we had three voltage and six voltage, voltage. with same resistor and we have is that what is now yeah no nah. we're gonna make a connection between gravitational potential energy to electric potential energy potential energy if you increase electric potential energy by double, that increases the current by double. Current by double. If you increase gravity, that increases the flow of water. water. All right. You see the connection? Oh. Do you see the connection? Yeah. If you increase the gravitational potential energy, that increases the flow of water. If you increase is the electric potential energy, that increases the flow of current. Flow of current. Why? Because it increases the flow of electron that carries the current charge. Oh. Now, you may ask, why the water slow down? Why the water slow down? Because you talk about a resistor. You talk about R. Oh, yeah. You talk about resistance. You talk about R, new corrector. Now let's find an analogous to the resistance. What would be the analogous to resistance over here? Uh, atoms. Not atoms. Is it stone? Do you have a stone in the pipe? What? Pine? Stone debris? Oh, yeah, stone like debris. 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 Okay, so yeah, they try like to they try to slow down what the flow, the flow, of, flow water. of water. So the water has to uh, dilute it and then overcome it. Excellent, excellent. You are doing much better than other day. You may. Other day. Yes, other day. Oh. Now, what slow down the electron because uh, electron carries charge. the charges. What slow down the electron in the wire? Is it atoms? Atoms. Finally, yes. Atoms try to slow down the electron. Electron carries current. So if electrons slow down, then current slow down. There will be less current. Yeah. Now you see that 
What is the resistant analogous to? Stone. Stone. And what is the stone analogous to? Resistance or anything. Can you say it in your own word or paraphrase it, what I said? So, resistance and current is analogous to the stone debris flowing in the water in a pipe. Very nice. Because mm. both, both are trying to stop uh, a certain thing from flowing and they have to dilute it or overcome it or something to get past it and keep flowing. Excellent. What is the word I said? Excellent. Excellent. Now. I mean, this math is excellent. Now, can you say that? What is, how do you say this statement? Current is proportional to voltage. Who observed that first? Faraday. Who discovered that? Faraday. Ohms. 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 